So we are now uh, live with uh, MakeForms, the last and the mega webinar with Rocket Hub. And we have Pratik with us, who's the founder and the face behind MakeForms, uh, behind a big team of 20 plus people, should be 30 plus soon, like the way we are scaling. So thank you so much, Pratik. And for building MakeForms, everyone is loving it. And uh, in one month, I mean, everyone knows about MakeForms, like if you have, we calculated by a number of people. Uh, everyone has heard and seen. They have you may, might have seen us uh, uptick in the traffic since then. Yeah, so, yeah. yep. So we had we had people know from where uh, we started one month back, and where are we with you know make forms, bringing out updates, and solving um, you know stuff for people, and then you know blowing everything up with uh, to Salesforce to your story and. Text box, so let's go, let's hit it. Yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, Karan, for the for the introduction. Much appreciated. So yeah, I think uh, it's been a very it's it's been a roller coaster right? I would say because uh before we were doing this uh what do you say uh LTD uh we we had you know kind of uh support going on and then once that this whole ltd thing started <clears throat> we really you know we we are overwhelmed when it comes to to support so i think but uh that's uh what you need right because you build something and and when you build a SaaS tool uh, you really can you know, like when, when we are building our own tool, you cannot think of all the things, right? Even though we a lot of thought process has already gone into building the tool. Uh, there are uh, people who would use the tool and come up with real life scenarios. And then uh, even we are like, oh, uh, we did not think of this. So I think uh, the goals that we had for the LTD uh, was not monetary only. Uh, but also stress testing the tool. And I would say that um, the tool performed really well at many places. There are definitely bugs, but I feel that anything has, like, like anything cannot be bug free ever. Okay, like you may be buying an enterprise tool, like like any, any enterprise tool, but even that will have bugs. Even That's, Facebook has bugs. <laughs> right so i think that uh, this this the goal that we had is pretty much achieved we have one more larger goal of 100k so i hope if if we do that then yes pebble box opens up for everyone so yeah. let's hope that happens pretty soon that's uh, good yeah, yeah. So let's let's do it. Just give me one second. Cool. I just need to send this message to someone. Sure. Let's welcome Charlie to then, everyone. <clears throat> just type uh Charlie in the chat box. <laughs> oh, what up? <laughs> let's get it up. <laughs> let's... Oh. Hey Charlie, what's up? Hey Pratik, good to see you. You must you're, you've had a busy two days, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very busy. And then uh so actually we I didn't knew that I'm gonna get selected in this uh as a as the tech 30 startup. So a lot of uh here and there, like I, I was supposed to travel to, to Toronto. Mm -hmm. I suppose, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you're supposed to be in the East Coast uh, here this this final webinar was to be taken from toronto uh so i had to do a reshare and, and all those things so yeah it's all good uh finally excellent well thanks for uh hanging out with us on a friday i appreciate that yeah yeah no so so that's what i and karan were discussing that, that like this week this is probably the third webinar that i'm i'm going on so it's it's a webinar week, it seems. Yep, it is. It is. Uh, and, and I think we have uh, a lot of people that are kind of like on that last, um, 
you know, hurrah in terms of like, oh, you know, should I buy it? Should I not buy it? So I wanted to give them a chance to yeah. get any last minute questions in before the weekend because, you know, weekends can be slower and we don't want people to be worried about like whether they can get in on the deal over a weekend. Right. Yep. So just trying to trying to make it all happen today. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'll quickly give a glance of all the things that have happened uh, when still there since we started the, the webinar. So I think the first thing that everyone asked us was, um, hey, um, can we just uh not send so initially you the users were able to send uh notifications only to the the members of the of the workspace so people demanded that we also want to be able to send out emails to actually those folks who are you know not in the uh workspace so that feature was launched on demand uh one mm -hmm. major feature that we launched is the payments so payments are now live. You can accept your payments. Stripe has gone live. Uh, and uh, so question on that. So that is live to everybody, the Stripe payments, or that's going live uh, on Monday? No, it's it's already live and it's, it's for everybody. It's live. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. very cool. Already live, yeah. So that's one thing. Uh, then we people demanded that uh, you know, there, there were so many small bugs here and there. So all of those mm -hmm. things are fixed. And then we launched form portals. And I think people have questions <clears throat> uh, that, hey, uh, the form portals are not showing up uh, forms from the custom domain. So that, that bug is being addressed. Then uh, we launched something. So, so form portals was launched. Uh, then uh, just today we added one more feature to the uh, to the calculated fields of of uh, power up. So that is uh, what does that mean? Power up. Uh, so you know, like let me quickly share my screen. Yeah, we can then go through the updates. Like if we can show, you know, what has been done, so people would be. Sure. No yeah. So this is this is like the race to so like you you want to do two race to three, like two into two into two, two power three. So so one of our LTD uh members had this question where you know like he they wanted to create an extremely complicated EMI calculator. So over here you have a power of n. So this this was missing. So our team just went in and uh, fixed it right away. And we have now within the calculated field, we have this power button over here. Then <clears throat> I would say we launched uh, the native Twilio integration for only for LTD agency users. And, and that's not even available for our MRR customers. Then we launched this new field called GDPR agreement, uh, wherein um, you, you can, you know, like when you have a lead forms for your EU clients, they, mm -hmm. they just ask you that I uh, give the consent to be contacted. So Got it, the GDPR consent field. This is the GDPR consent field. Uh, then Got people it. that in the legal consent, uh, they want people to mandatory just accept and not uh, select I don't accept. So now we have this new field called mandatory acceptance. So now mm. if people click on I don't accept, they cannot submit this form. So these are the kind of things that um, we launched. <clears throat> and so I think... There is a lot. Then we, we also launched a feature yeah. where you can ex export the form. So today you can just go in and export the form and it will be exported as a .mf file. So then you yeah. can add I wanted to highlight this one. Uh, to, me, to me, this is cool, uh, but I don't think we actually explained this to most people. So can we spend the one or two minutes just kind of talking, showing this, and then also talking about why this is so useful? Yeah, so, so let's say today you are creating a form, okay, you are in, in one workspace and you want to take this this form and you want to uh, put it 
or for some another client in, in their workspace. So uh, you can just switch the workspace. Uh, let's say I go in here and then you can just click on import form and then uh, you can just take one of your .mf file. So now uh, it's so simple to actually just m have the form uh, without the submission moved from one workspace to another workspace. So now you can see nice. we're building this form in, in my workspace and then I switch to another workspace and uh, this form is now over there. And nice. then I have a question. Could 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 people share forms that they build and make forms with each other, but they're not in the same account? Meaning, I have my own account, Pratik, you have your own account. You created some some cool calculator or something. You now export that calculator .mf file to make form file. You send it to me via you know via email or via Slack or whatever. And yeah. now I import it into my account and I'm already like moving a million miles an hour now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly what it's. And, and the it. reason we built this was like every time a user used to ask me that, hey, I want to do this. How do I do it? And then I was like, okay, let me create a video. And so then, then when they see the video, they would have had to download, like do all of those things themselves. So uh, it was like double work for them. Like first, like for everyone, first I have to create the video and they have to see the video and then they have to again reproduce that. So, and and while doing that, they might, you know, at times uh, miss out on something. So then this was pr probably my idea that um, there should be a uh, .mf file. And again, if you, sorry, if you see that, if you try to open this file, uh, it you, you won't be able to find anything because this mm. is all all encrypted. Nice. So, yeah, that's that's yeah. That was going to be my next question: was is it encrypted? Yeah. So so it's already encrypted. You know. So this is so these are some things that we did, and then yeah, uh, people were not able to rename the workspaces, so we launched a workspace renaming feature. So all of these things, like we, we kept on doing stuff and all of this is in like, like I would say what, like 30 days and all of this while uh, we were having lots and lots of, uh, you know, uh, uh, holiday season in India because there are like, like it and, and from August, it, it is a wave of festivals that come in India. Mm -hmm. yep. so, but um, still with all those things uh we were able to ship ship so much yeah no i'm pretty proud of how much you guys have shipped in the last three weeks uh in fact i asked my team to uh gather all of the updates in one place um i know you guys probably have that too in your change log or whatnot but i wanted to do something a bit more visual uh mm -hmm. so after this webinar we'll go ahead and provide like a google doc that shows all the updates you guys have made mm -hmm. yeah yeah sure uh that's i had a question pratik on the um two more features which have launched launched i think when is the gtpr agreement as well right a new feed that uh functions similarly to a legal consent is it the same as the mandatory mm -hmm. uh, legal consent acceptance mm -hmm. uh sorry i i didn't get the last uh, i can i can answer that um it's that's just name it, naming semantics, uh, whether you call it the GP, GDPR agreement or the legal agreement. Um, it you know, uh, the second part of that question is actually more related to a parameter of that field, which is do you want it to be mandatory acceptance or optional? Yeah, so you can just turn it on and off, so so it's very easy in that way. So, yeah, I think, uh, and now the team is also working on allowing users to to change their email addresses and mm -hmm. the, the two-factor authorization. And then um, we also have a, a native uh, WordPress plugin, which is being built. So- I think you also did something with reCAPTCHA, right? Where people had yeah, some- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, so so this was again, like people were really not happy with how we, we forced the reCAPTCHA uh onto the onto the forms edge capture and recapture so 
uh, what we did is that if you are publishing on frms.link, uh, then we put in our own reCAPTCHA keys. And then if you could bring in your custom domain, then we let you to uh, configure your CAPTCHA uh, within the uh, domain settings. So now all the forms that are published, like even the JS embed and everything, uh, they are just so simple. You don't have to go in and select what kind of CAPTCHA do you want to have. So this was again like to ease the everyone's lives over there. And, and actually having a CAPTCHA field, which you cannot remove, uh, was very <clears throat> frustrating to the users because even if they selected edge CAPTCHA, then reCAPTCHA would render because we had some logic set it out that way. So yeah, nice catch current. Even, even I missed out that <laughs> we actually yeah. did, you know. Yep. Yeah, like, that, that's what I mean. There's a lot that was actually done. Uh, we started making a list and we we're like, oh, this is actually more than we thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, some of it are enhancements, some of it are bug fixes, and some of it's just brand new large features, which are really cool. Um, and I see a few people already have posted questions in the Q&A section. Uh, so anybody else who has questions, please post them in the Q&A Q yeah. part so that we can organize them and answer every single one of them. Um, that'll be good. And then if there are any specific items for the attendees that you would like to uh, see live on the screen or, you know, have us go through, like, uh, we can do that. Um, th because we've had other webinars in the past, we've probably answered a lot of things already. So let's use this webinar specifically to uh, tie up loose ends, uh, see something live that maybe you didn't get to see in a previous webinar. Um, and any open questions that's, you know, maybe like has you on the fence right now, let's go ahead and tackle that. So more questions, the better. I think Pratik, you can you can also show people the form portals. So many of them don't have haven't seen it yet, or they don't know like what it's about. You know, you just sure. show them um, the the use case and the utility. Mm, sure, I can do that. Mm. <clears throat> so the the form portal creation is very simple. And the reason we created form portals is because we have seen people, uh, you know, like making a list of forms and then having an Excel sheet just to maintain those links. So we thought that there should be a form portal. In fact, I'm going to start using uh, form portals for all the different calculators and everything that I create. So <clears throat> when you create a form portal, it's, it's very easy. So you and you can create as many form portals as you want to. So let's say I would do uh, calculators. Then you can upload a header image. So let's say I upload this one. Uh, you can set your um, form portal logo. A fab icon. Uh, you can add a button. So let's say you want to do a WhatsApp. Let's say um, call Pratik. You want to do... And I can also do it like WhatsApp colon. And then here you select all the different forms that you want to. So let's say I'll search for calculator. Uh, let's say uh, we don't have much calculators here. So I, I'll select this. Let's say these, all of these. Again, and I save this. So now my form portal is published on this link. I go here and you can see that all the elements that I set like this thing comes here. When you click this, uh, it opens up a WhatsApp link. Uh, you can nice. search, let's say, this is real time search that happens. And then it's, it's easier to actually, and you can also publish form portals on your own links. So you click here, you just do, like dot make forms dot io I write form portal. I'll hit update URL. So now if you go back and check that old uh form portal URL, uh it won't work. And now the the form portal is available on this URL. We know that there's nice. 
people and this this link out so people have one question that uh, they cannot uh, even if they publish it on their custom domain the form portal pulls up the url from frms.link so so that that uh, thing is being uh, you know worked on right now it's it's a bug that we acknowledge so so if you can see uh, since i've updated my form portal the old link where my form portal used to be it it is not active anymore so all of these things are done uh, so this is this is like a very simple feature uh, but we feel that uh, if you have a client like <clears throat> uh, like a finance company uh, who have lots of forms to fill out or, or if it's an HR company uh, that wants to do the onboarding uh, of their new employees, the HR department can have literally a form portal and then so it's like a, a mini website for, for folks actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Got it. Oh, that's very cool. Um, it's it's one of the things that a lot of WordPress plugins have where, you know, you'll go to all forms and you'll see all the forms. Um, and so now this kind of eliminates the need or that little extra benefit that a WordPress plugin would have uh, because yeah. MakeForms has that too and has it at a much more advanced level. Yeah, and, and it's it's very quick, actually. Mm -hmm. yep. see. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you just hit it and then it's boom. It just loads in like a matter of seconds. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Very cool. Overall, yeah, I, I feel that so much has happened then that I even it, it's very difficult for even me to actually keep track of, okay, mm -hmm. I did this. So, yep. yeah. No worries. We'll, we'll keep you on track. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> familiar with everything that's going on. Um, yeah. And I see a lot of cool questions coming through as well. Um, yeah. And then, then again, like if someone wants to see see what is, is Pebble Box like, so I'll, I'll quickly run through a demo. So this is what Pebble Box is. So you click on experience now. So this is this is a uh, question like, would you be uh, comfortable sharing your full name? I would like try just P. Okay, so the the AI will try to talk to me and say that this is a bit short. So I, I, then I'll write only Pratik. So now it will it will insist on giving me a full name. So I'll write okay, Pratik Kaila. And then it feels okay. This is good. So now it goes on to the next one. And here, if I I do like meow, just a, just to play with it. So, so here you can see that it is now bringing in a, a cat emoji. So I'd say hi at makestories.io. So, you know, like, um, then, then here it's trying to ask me that, where do I work? So let's say I'll just write the name of my, my city, okay? So let's say, oh, I mean the name of the company you work for and not the location. So. It, it uh, tries to, you know, kind of uh, engage uh, uh, with the user. And and this is what uh, it is all about. So it, it's asking me, tell me, what's your objective with Pebble Box? I'd say, I don't know, for example. So now it's trying to say, you, 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 do you think you, how, just try to give it a shot and think, how do you think you might use Babel Box? I'd say, okay, I may do surveys. So this is like, uh, and, and this is my best part. Like it asked in, in US dollars. So I would say, let's say one lakh uh, Indian rupees, for example. So now it will go back and say, um, it's telling me I need the amount in USD, not Indian rupees. Please convert it and tell me in the amount in USD. So now I will ask it. I'll say you convert 100,000 INR into USD and tell me. So now it says that 100,000 INR is approximately 1,310 US dollars. So would you be willing to pay for this amount so i'd say yes i'm fine with that so so now you just get about 
like this is no longer your uh what do you say normal form but it's like someone like talking to the the person on the other side and trying to get out the you know the the answers from them and and i think that um things like these will be the the future of of communication so yeah i think uh this is this is what we want to give the ltd community um and and everyone needs to promote make forms with that and make sure that we reach the target perfect amazing so yeah i think that explains it and the name explains it all battle box right <laughs> yeah so correct so we got it. so we now get to the questions and um folks we have 16 questions now and some in the chat box so um if you can move them to the queen of q and a sec queen box it will be amazing you can then categorize it well um but i will then start off okay so pretty if you want to do your magic you can <laughs> yeah why does the form portal use the original yeah i think we we answered that how are you tracking feedback plus bugs and how are you tracking user requests? So I would say that at the moment we are we are spread thin. We have uh, feature requests on on our roadmap website and then uh, the team is uh, trying to make a list of all the bugs uh, and if it if those are very small bugs then they are being <clears throat> result on the fly and uh, some of them are being you know uh, result in, in matters of hours and not days but if, if there are things like uh, very uh, complicated bugs then it's it's taking some time like we know for the matter of fact that raw embed is something that uh, had an issue and uh, and and Actually, we never thought that anyone would use raw embed, so that was a feature that we did not pay much attention to. <clears throat> so that's that's what uh, we are doing. Like we are trying to make things okay. better. Yeah, so, let me see if I can uh, add more context to that. Uh, so there's two different types of requests. Uh, one would be bugs. I think if it's an actual real bug. It should be sent to support at makeforms.io so that they can uh, actually see it, replicate it, uh, and determine how to fix it and how whether it's large, small, and you know what critical or whatnot. Yeah. If it is a feedback request, meaning, hey, you'd like to make a suggestion or you have a feature request, then um, please use their roadmap.makeforms.io link. And there's a feedback tab there, and that's what uh, would be the best way to suggest a feature. Um, is that correct, Pratik? Is that the way you yeah. would prefer? Yeah, yeah okay. that's the way we would prefer. Sina okay. says, I think renaming GDPR equipment to legal equipment. Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can do that. Uh, it should not, but yeah, for now it's, it's GDPR agreement. Uh, then is there any news about WordPress plugin? Yeah, it should be the WordPress plugin should go live on the on the repo in the next uh three weeks or so. Then Irfan says when the white labeling will be available, specifically customization of PDF, email design, and notification email address. So uh PDF of uh, the the dev will begin next month. And email design. Uh, I am I'm not pretty sure about it. Uh, and the notification email address. This is something where we are uh, we have issues with compliance because uh, let's say today someone brings in uh, their own SMTP and SMTP is actually not uh, EU compliant or GDPR or HIPAA compliant. So, so even today, if if we are sending out e emails, uh, so we are doing it differently for different data centers, like so. This is the reason, uh, we we try to bring this in our internal discussions, uh, and it comes out that we really 
want to ensure that that uh the, if if we allow custom SMTP, then uh we we get onto the shared responsibility model wherein then make forms is responsible for a certain part of compliance and then it is also the user's responsibility to ensure that any SMTP uh, provider they bring in also has the similar level of compliances. So all of that is is very technical. And when we say that we we not only ensure the privacy and what do you say privacy and the uh, security of not only the form creator but also the one who is filling the form this is what we mean another thing that our suggestion that our team has come up with is to allow users to get like connect their own uh, like like we do the uh, DKI and SMTP provision uh, and we you know just how we are doing custom domains similarly we do custom SMTP so so all of that is is very technical and it's going to take a couple of months to to actually come down and you know think that okay this is how we are going to go forward so so it's it's very technical it, it, like if if we have to do it without thinking all of this it's it's a very small dev for us but then you know if if we claim that okay we are uh, the most powerful and secure form builder then then we want to adhere to it also yeah, yeah. I think this is one of those cases where, if you weren't a SaaS developer and weren't someone fully, fully immersed in the security, compliance, privacy standards, yeah, on the surface it sounds like, hey, why can't you just, you know, let me use my email, or why can't you let me do this, or why can't you just send it to this person? It seems so easy on the surface. And you'd be absolutely right. Any other forms maker, forms app would probably just say, yeah, we do that. We allow that as if it's a feature. Whereas here, we have to look at more of the holistic view of for security and compliance to maintain your credentials, exactly. the GDPR credentials, the HIPAA credentials. So you don't want to sacrifice that in the interest of getting some basic feature right? Yeah. You have to really think that through. And that's why it takes months when you make these decisions. Yeah. And and and, and when it was like uh, feasible, we just went ahead and, and we released the features for users. So mm -hmm. it's yep. not, we don't want to give it, but we just want to be very safe about anything that we do. Then mm -hmm. someone says agency owner of tier three have problems that invited users can see all the information of tier three plan limits. How to just create a simple invitation to the workspace instead of ask user to create a complete new account on make forms. Uh, I think this is a very tricky question. Uh, I don't know how to answer this, but you know, like if you, I would say you are making, uh, I think, uh, it is, I, I let, can, let me see if uh, I can help you. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I can see what what you think. Like it, like you take this and your client understands that you are using an LTD uh, tool and you just paid for it once and you have unlimited. But again, like this is how, you know, like the, the entire make forms archi engineering architecture is set up, like where you need to have an account on make forms. Now, if you just want to bring in an, uh, a viewer, uh, we are thinking like how to do it. I, this, this, but, but this came in only once or twice and it has not been, you know, asked many times. So that's the reason, you know, maybe this did not pick up precedence, but we'll see if we can do something about it. But, I, but I don't have an exact answer for that right away. Charlie, if you have anything, then. Yeah, I do. Um, cause I deal with this too uh, in SaaS products. Uh, you actually have to separate the two questions. Um, so question number one is related to just the visibility of your plan limits, which, okay, I completely understand. I think they're at the bottom left of the app. And yeah, we could. there's two or three ways to handle that. One, it could just be collapsed by default. That's option one. Option two, um, it could just say, hey, you're on this plan, but not show you the limits. And then the limits can be in the account settings. I think that one is a bit 
easier to tackle um, on the roadmap. But like that one can be tackled without sacrificing anything. The second part of the question relates to uh, inviting a user and them having them being able to uh, them having to create an account. That one's not an easy one to just say, oh, well, we, we'll, we'll do it where they don't have to create an account. They have to, because again, this goes back to that earlier conversation about security, compliance, standards, identity verification, auditability, all the stuff that makes make forms completely unique to all these other form apps is the reason you do not want that. It sounds nice, but you actually don't want to invite a user that doesn't create an account. You exactly. want them to create the account for all the other aspects. And so I would say that's a no. You shouldn't even do that. Um, as a SaaS developer, I would say no to that. But the first one in terms of just, hey, visibility, can we just move the plan limits uh, to the account settings area and they're only visible to the account admin or whatever. I think that's a nice suggestion uh, to be considered. Yep, yep. Yeah, and then the second one is, can tier one be upgraded to any level of tier at any period of time? Is it No, I think you need to upgrade it till the deal lasts. So that would be day after tomorrow, right, Charlie? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so, so yeah, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so you want to get your, you want to get upgraded so, um, before the deal ends. That would be, that's uh, going to be Sunday midnight. Uh, after that, you pretty much got to assume there will make forms is not an LTD anymore. They're done. We want to close it, close out the books for them. And, you know, everybody has their refund window from the date they bought for 30 days. So you're safe, you're secure. You can continue to see how the team progresses. No problem. Uh, but at Rocket Hub, if you guys haven't noticed, we always try to get our deal partners in and out of the lifetime deal world. So we're, we're the fastest at doing that. Every other platform has deals for like, you know, six months. We don't even allow that at Rocket Hub. In fact, we're going the opposite direction. We want shorter deals so that these deal partners can get into LTD world and they can get out of the LTD world and move towards MRR. And so that's what we want for make forms because believer that they have a great product. Their MRR is not going to be a problem for these guys, uh, and especially given that they've built for enterprise right from the beginning. So I want to I want to let them move forward. Um, so yeah, if you if you are on the fence about the LTD, if you are on the fence about upgrading, uh, my suggestion to you: we're talking about ninety nine, one ninety nine, and two ninety nine. Just do it. This is one of these apps that's critical to your operations. So. Uh, you know, if someone told me, hey, Slack is on a lifetime deal, I'm going to go buy the Mac stack of that, <laughs> right? Someone told me, hey, Gmail is on lifetime deal. I'm going to go buy the lifetime deal of that. To me, forms is a, is is critical. Like you're going to need it all the time, every time on all your websites. So this is not a nice to have, it's a must have. And when you find an LTD, that's a must have. Buy, buy it at Mac stack. Do not second guess it. Yeah. Um, then a few hours ago, I bought the make forms tier three, but have not had a chance to explore it further. I have a few questions. Uh, can we embed Vimeo or YouTube videos on thank you for it? Yeah, you soon will be able to do that. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, it was done. It's on the staging, but we found some bugs. And so it's, it's moved, uh, the release has been moved. And then how do I delete a workspace? So so right now you cannot delete, but that feature is also built and it will be launched soon. So you will be able to delete the workspaces soon. Do we have unlimited portals? Yeah, you have you've got unlimited portals actually. The partial submission is collecting empty data. For example, if someone visits a page and does not interact with me, format records. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. We, we noticed that ourselves, so uh we we acknowledge that bug and and it's being worked on right now uh just says that i understand why you always show babble box on this zoom but i don't think i have ever seen a clear answer on whether or not make forms ltd owners are getting babble box included if not i'd rather it was not shown because then i just feel like i should wait for babble mm -hmm. box and not any so, <laughs> so <laughs> charlie do you want to talk to that? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so I, I, I can tackle that one, no problem. Um, so the incentive, in fact, actually, let me take, give some historical context uh, first. Uh, when this deal went live, Babelbox wasn't even part of the equation. Um, in fact, it became part of the equation a week after the deal went live. The deal has only been live for 30 days, guys. Uh, actually, we haven't hit the 30 days. 30 days is when it ends, essentially. Um, uh, so after the first week, uh, I think there were a few LTD folks who asked, hey, isn't this the same team that has a video about Babelbox on YouTube? And they actually saw Babelbox on YouTube. They saw a demo of it. And these LTD buyers said, said, can we get that? Even though Babelbox is just an experimental feature that you know the Make Forums team was playing around with. Uh, in fact, it was the, I would say, the genesis to Make Forms. Um, so they were playing around with uh, Babelbox. I eventually said, hey, that's a nice experimental feature. We'll come back to that in the future, put it on the back burner. Let's focus on make forms and getting that to the market. And so they got make forms to the market after 18, 24 months of development. And uh, when the LTD buyer saw some video of Babel, I didn't even know Babelbox existed. Uh, and I'm, I'm the LTD platform, <laughs> but I didn't know it existed. But someone sent me the video and said, hey, what about this, this Babelbox thing? Is that going to be like part of make forms? And the answer at that time was no, it was not going to be part of make forms. And still not, it's still experimental feature. Uh, the reason uh, we decided, hey, let's let's at least tell people about it is we talked to Pratik and his team and said, hey, can we include this if it's ever going to be a feature? Uh, now, we're not pro they're not promising that it's a feature. It's experimental. So let's be very clear about that. Uh, but they said, hey, look, if you guys help us hit our milestone so that we're set for the future, uh, we, would, we wouldn't mind integrating that Babelbox feature into make forms. There's no point trying to um, manage two different apps. Uh, make forms is really their core. That's the app they're going to manage. They're going to maintain. And so they gave us that, uh, I guess you could say, incentive, for lack of better words, to set, to hit a hundred k in sales. And if we do that, cool. Well, they'll they'll integrate it. Um, and for I know some of you are just going to ask me right now, like, okay, how far are we from 100K? So I'll just tell you right now, uh, we are probably 20K away from it. So uh, I'm expecting hopefully a lot of sales in the next two days. If you guys want to help me out, uh, please do. Uh, tell it, tell tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your grandma, whoever, uh, and let's let's make this happen. Uh, but I'm one of those um, one of those people that believes in one thing, which is you never move the goal goalpost. Uh, so if you guys don't understand that phrase, uh, it means once you set a milestone or a goal, you don't make it shorter just so you could achieve it. You, yeah. you, you're you locked in on that goal. So we have a goal post and I want to hit that goal post. I'm hoping the community will rally behind it and help us hit that goal post. You guys have already done a good job. Uh, so I'm not trying to take any credit away, uh, but uh, we are close, but you know, you could you could end up being close but no cigar, or you could end up saying close, and now we have Babble Box for everybody. Now the other caveat I want to just throw out there, just to set expectations, is it's an experimental feature. I know it looks sexy, I know it looks cool, but there's work that needs to be done to make it actually integrate into Make Forms. So please don't don't say, oh well. Well, we have it a week after the deal or anything. And no, you will not have it a week after the deal. This type of development takes, I would guesstimate, again, me being also a SaaS founder, I would guesstimate you're looking at several months before something that slick and sexy is integrated. So assume three, four, five, six months. Yeah. Yeah. I would say four months, four months looks realistic uh, because we, we do not want it to be a completely separate dashboard. Uh, we, we just want that every form that you create, a, a Babel box for that is automatically created. So that's what we are looking at. Okay, so the next question, where do you see make forms a year from now in terms of path breaking features? How would you like to position it, uh, it as a product in long term? Is this a vision to keep it just a damn good form builder? Or you are look, seeing it to evolve into something else? So, so I would say... <clears throat> So for the next year, we go. So, so I'll 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 talk about this year first. So I have been 
saying this again and again that this year we are going to slow down on the features because the, the whole form builder is already uh you know like has a lot of features and if we do this level of ad hoc dev work the the whole code is gonna get bloated and when i say bloated it's like then then the tool goes in such a phase that we launch some another feature and due to that new feature the old features keep on breaking okay so so we do not want to be in such a position where things keep on breaking more often so now we are going to take a step back and we are going to have a, be in a place where we just optimize the existing feature set and and that's exactly uh, what I was trying to convey at the start of this week that led to an explosive conversations throughout the community. So so if you go and see the roadmap for this year, you're going to see a very pretty much empty roadmap. So once we are done stabilizing the entire system, the next year, I would say uh, there will be things like new fields coming in wherein you have the ra ranking field. And then the, the larger goal is for make forms to not just be a data collection tool, but get into the data management tool. Now, two days before, people asked me question about Formulu apps. So I would say that Formulu apps are nothing but just a way to actually display just what do you say the data in in certain table view or something like that. But we are literally looking at apps through our vault. So we we have already shown to the world what how powerful vault is with our API vault. You can create currency conversion calculators and things like that. Now we are going to take vault one level ahead and basically vault will be at the center of, of your apps that you will be creating with make forms. When I say this, uh, let's assume you are running a giveaway and you want to do like random coupon codes, like ranging from 5% to 25%. What you will do is uh in the vault you will have a so so vault is going to have different types of entities okay the one will be uh the api vault which is already live the second one will be a document vault the third one will be the coupon code vault so what you can do is you can rather have make forms create all those coupon codes for you or you can have we bring in our own coupon code csv and upload it now you will connect that vault to your form and whenever someone fills the form uh, one coupon code will be taken out and will be sent to that user so when we are talking about apps this is the level we are going another kind of app that we've thought about is the election app so you will be adding your users okay you will be and then what make forms will do is it will send out invitations to all those users with unique one time links. And when the person opens that link, he will fill it out once and then that link will expire and they cannot vote again. So these kind of these are these I feel are really the apps. And these this is where we are looking to take ahead. Now, when it comes to data management, uh, our team is already working on on a natural language uh, querying in a chat GPT style, wherein let's say today you've collected data. Uh, so you just want to ask, uh, you want to ask the AI to work on those data. Like, hey, uh, give me the list of, of people who have uh, applied for this particular course or something like that so then the day the ai goes into the database and takes out things and gives it to you in some format so uh, i would say the future we'll look at so, so i've always told people one thing whenever i pitch to investors i tell them that in the past 30 years 
since the the web was launched if you see the only way to collect data is through forms but when people go out and create forms it's they just don't give a damn about how the form looks like and things like that so we form is the only thing that collects the data but it's the most underrepresented member of the of the ecosystem on top of that the form builders out there really do not have <clears throat> have the security in mind so uh, i would say this is where we've started and now we are just going to build on top of this so we we are with a vision of becoming a form creation mini form apps plus the data management tool all combined together so that is that is what the the larger goal is and if you are going to ask me about my personal goals then uh charlie already knows that i own the domain called make.io and and the larger goal is to actually fix all the broken tools like email builder page builders and and everything but that's a very larger goal so i think i've i've explained way about that what i should have so so yeah this is all all that we envision with with make forms so now the next question is for the api vault uh, you just did you just answer that or like where did that question go uh, i think i answered it no no there was a... oh, okay okay yeah, so no, yeah no, was... someone, someone, someone was just asking if they wish they had a directory of oh, free APIs. Uh, free APIs. So I gave them links to some of those directories. Uh, so Irfan asks, is it possible to add logic to show hyperlink text or a custom link? Uh, uh, I asked this question before, but did not get any clears. To show a hyperlink text. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, what you can actually do is is using the logic you can actually show hide. It's it's very simple. Let me actually show it right away. So let's say you have this. So let's say, uh, what was your question again? To show how um, uh, yeah. if... I think he's just, uh, Arfan's just looking for, uh, it looks like conditional logic based on a selection, show a specific text, which I think is pretty easy. Yeah, that we can certainly do that. There's a paragraph text and I would say that I'll just add a logic. And I'd say if this, uh, is empty or is not empty is filled uh then just um show the field the paragraph text and then if it's 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 not empty then just hide this field paragraph text so it's it's that simple like right now it's not showing but the moment i start typing it just shows up and then if you are talking about the about the url change then what you can actually do is I'll just show it to you here in this. You can just click here and you can just change the URL to redirect after submit. So if let's say if someone is has filled their mobile yeah, their email address, sorry, their full name, then maybe you can just redirect them to Google.com and if they have it as empty, then you can just change that URL to let's say Twitter. So yeah, so it's it's very easy to actually do these kind of things. Cool. So then the, the next question is that curious, what is the reason for encrypting the .mf export file? Why not something non-proprietary? Like, actually, it's all JSON, but but the team wanted to, to just encrypt it. My my dev was like, let's encrypt it. And, and the key is only with us. So, yeah. I am based in UU and I am also, I am using EU data center. What if I land a customer in US? Can I switch data center specifically? No, you cannot do that. Uh, so uh, it's the 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 data center selection is based on the master account so all the workspaces created by that admin 
create get created in the same data center. So I would say this is a good time to actually buy two licenses and one have one license in EU, the another one in US actually. I can find a date range calendar. I know it has Calendly. Can we have a field with make form so people can select a date from available calendar date? Oh, I think uh, this would be like straight up getting into and competing with Calendly. I don't want to do that now. So I would say we, we don't have that. Is there any plan to widen the integration inside make forms rather than and using? Yeah, yeah. so I think we are already integrated with Airtable. This is something that we'll keep on, on building later. So we'll have more, more integrations in the very common feature. Can the app support a membership portal? I think that's interesting, uh, but but not sure if it's you know yeah I don't know how that would work whole new, whole new league actually yeah so, so one thing that we are doing is is login based forms so people first need to create an account and then they will be able to able to fill the form that is something that we are definitely doing in twenty four. So if you if if I ever open my notion, there is just so much thing that you know you you can. They keep on thinking a lot and then put it, it over there. Have we reached the sales mark to include Bebel? If so, what year will we get it? Okay, so I think, uh, Charlie, you said we are 20K away. I, I, actually, I didn't yeah. know that we were 20K away. I thought that we are yet, yet a lot away. So, yeah, yeah. It's, I think so 20K more to go for Bebel box. And yeah, if it will be available to to all the tiers in, in LTD. So nothing to worry about it. <clears throat> I want to embed an MF form on an on my site and integrate that with Dundon mailbox like what one of the founders showed here. So is there a way to for us to set reply to email address using MF form? Uh, I think this is quite this is connecting a web form to a mailbox. Okay. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go through this actually. I have a custom domain set up uh, forms dot I have some portals and some good all good. If someone types forms dot domain dot com in their browser, is it going to be going to possible to redirect them somewhere? I see this living under domain settings and yeah, I think that's that's a good ask. We can we can think about it. So I think yeah, that's it. I think we've completed all the all the questions. Great. Okay. Can we import question and answer? I think you have done it. Sorry? So there's a question on, there's a question from Zaki. Can we import questions and answers? Uh, you can only import uh, forms right now, not the questions and answer. So will MF become app developing tool? No, I think we don't want to get there. We just want to make uh, life easier for those people like the the HR departments like we don't want to get into a full-blown bubble type of stuff but whenever it comes to data collection and data management uh, we just want to identify the problems in, in, in those space and we want to fix those so, so there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting comment you know from Faz he says uh, that he just checked out make stories and it's amazing. So you should have just forced everyone to check that out to see what this team is capable. Oh, we did. We like we, we did. That was the, <laughs> that was the first comment. Like even if you read everywhere, you mentioned that this is the team behind make stories. So some people didn't get it. They thought that make stories is just a tool. Like it's a number one tool for, used for enterprises when we talk about. So you just go ahead and check the logos on the site. You you know who is using make stories. Um, on a daily basis. And let so, me do one more flex today. Uh, <laughs> let's cause like go for it, man. Flex uh, away. This is your last <laughs> chance. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see this, guys, uh, this is our third tool, which is in making. Uh, it's called Make Emails. Uh, we'll have an LTD for this soon. So you start by dragging columns. And then you can have one column, three column. Maybe you can just drag drop an image here. You can click this. Then you put in an image. 
And if you see the level of depth that's gone here, the simplicity, the smoothness, it's just next level. And then uh, what we've done is we have the body, which is like this one. So you can enable the color. Then, then you go here in the section, you have something called as padding. So this is like, like this section. So, and then if you see this, uh, I've, I've not seen this in any tool. Now you can literally uh, resize the, the column sizes actually. So let's say you want to do it like this. And then you can equate this. Then you can have the background. Uh, and then you, so, so everything for in, in, in emails is like body section column. So here, if you can just go in, you can change the padding. And then if you want to have different paddings, you can just click this. And then uh, if you see that the small detailing that has gone here, sorry, like uh, if you are in this, it shows that this is the top padding, the right padding, the bottom and the left one. So this is this is a tool in making and it's going to have, uh, you know, AMP carousal. So you, you've not seen carousals ever in emails. So now we are bringing in carousals here. So you can have something with thumbs and then you can have add slides. So you can just add the photo URL over here. And then, you know. I'm so half joking, you, I'm half joking, but you shouldn't even show them this. <laughs> if you want this because, on LTD, yeah. then go ahead and yeah, get like, <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, I guess this is kind of the, you know, everybody's seen me, I sound like a fanboy. Um, You've seen me boast and make very, very uh, strong statements about make forms and why I believe in them. Um, and that I truly, and again, you guys know, I see a lot of SaaS tools uh, and we reject a lot of SaaS tools at Rocket Hub too. Um, this is what I mean is th these little details of how you build a new feature. Um, you're just not going to get this in another forms app. So I, I hate when I see what I'll call average people who do not spend their lives reviewing SaaS apps, uh, who do not take the time to study this, you know, just this one little field and it, the parameters that are allowed within that field and the padding required to make it beautiful and all. Like, you're not in a position to be giving reviews as far as I'm concerned, okay? Uh, this is a different league and people like me recognize a different league when I see it which is why I've been very, very strongly communicating that this is a next level app. Uh, you don't hear me say that about any other apps. If you can find me saying that about other apps, go right ahead. But you ain't gonna see the same level of, um, of intensity at which I've done this. So I tend not to hype anything up. And here I am hyping it up and I'm telling you I'm hyping it up because I believe it really is one of the best products I've seen. Yeah, and then and then I think um, what we are doing very different is is we are actually you know kind of like whenever we build a field, we can we just think okay, what can a user do there? So like if you see a drop down, we have something called as predefined list. Okay, so over here we have something called as country. So it it lists down all the countries. If you select country state, it gives you the country and the state. And then if, if you go here, uh, if let's say we use that United States, it loads all the US states. While we were doing the LTD, uh, there was one guy who came in and he said that, okay, I am looking uh, to have state and city only from the US because I don't want anyone else to select any the country first because I cater only to the US audience. So we said, okay, let's bring in another field called state city. Now you go in and you select which country you want to have. So now uh, when you go into the design, you will see only the US states. Actually, this does not work in the design phase. And then you select the state and then uh, the cities for that state actually load. So uh, I would say, so, so it's I, I've seen the LTD world. I've seen the the harshness this week. I feel that for for certain people, they have like a very fixed agenda, 
and they say oh it's a normal form builder too but then uh you know like it it over the top it might look like okay uh here it is it is simple but if you add each and every field and then when you go into the minute detailing of every field that's where you know uh, you will actually understand the power so this is what i think many people are missing when they are checking out the tool like just like one thing which none of the form builder tool has is something called as sensitive data so <clears throat> today you know uh, there are folks uh, who who build in in the companies uh, they need just give me a second sorry about that <clears throat> so uh, you know today let's say charlie you want to have a form where anyone who is filling the form you just want that uh, people in your certain people in your company cannot see the email addresses you want to hide it from them mm -hmm. so in in that case what you will do is that let's say we are putting in an email address you will just mark it as a sensitive data now what this actually does uh, is that uh, let's let's try to show it live Okay, so when you go into the members and when you see any particular user, you click on manage access and you have a full blown grid of ACL, which if you see at the first time, uh, you will be a little overwhelmed because you really have to, you know, kind of, this is like a matrix. You have to know oh, oh, just what is this? Like how, what features do I give access to and whatnot? So here, let's say for Deepak, I just give them access to everything, but not the sensitive data. Okay, so they, sorry. So I can say that, okay, I just want them to see the submissions, that's it. But I don't want them to view any kind of sensitive data. So now when Deepak logs into his account, he cannot see the sensitive data actually. Similarly, over here in this form, uh, Pratik does not have access to sensitive data, this email address. So now, uh, let's say <clears throat> uh, we have this form. Okay, now this this setting is still that level wherein you select the form settings. You go into enable the send email notifications and you select, okay, this, this is the uh, emails where we are going to send email notifications. I'll just republish this form. So now whenever they get an email, Okay, and, and let's also try to do one more thing. Uh, let's also enable OTP verification. So, you know, like this is also something very uh, different that we are doing is we are allowing users to enable, uh, like do the OTP verification of people who are uh, filling the form actually. So I'll hit hard refresh. Okay, and I'll select the country and the state and I'll hit submit okay so I think uh, the form did not so now I actually have an email uh, coming into that email box uh, over here so now you can see that since this user okay this user did not have access to the sensitive data and email address was marked as sensitive. So it's all coming in a star. So uh, it, it, even in the PDF that comes in, it, it is all asterisk. So now today, just imagine you are, you are with an enterprise client and you just want to say that, hey, we have this level of ACL built in. So this is not something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis where you can decide, okay, we are going to do this. One more thing that we have done very different is, is something called uh, repeater fields. So I, I was with Alma yesterday and, and we built this uh, thing. Yeah, and, and this is also an interesting thing. So so many a times you have the, the legal fields and <clears throat> so we have something called as enforced reading. So what this does is that uh, if you see this particular form, okay, <clears throat> no, actually, 
Uh, okay, I need to republish this one, sorry. Okay, so now if you see, I cannot click these buttons, like I accept. So now I have to go down, I have to first scroll through all of this, then only these buttons will be activated. Now this is something that, you know, if you had to do it, you're, you know, first of all, you cannot do it through any of the form builders, then this is the time where you pull in your developer and say, hey, I, I want to build this functionality. So the and then there is something called as as repeater fields, uh, which we we walked through with Alma on her uh, yesterday's thing. So what you can actually do is, let's say you, you create a repeater group field, okay? And you just enter all the fields that you want to have there. So now I will actually show how it works. so now over here uh, we have this thing where it says enter all attendee webinar attendees so I can just enter my name I can enter my email address and then every attendee can add up to three email addresses so you click add more add more and I would say p at p dot com and i at pgg dot in and then I can actually add another set of attendees i would say let's say charlie uh, charlie at uh, charlie.com and then i submit this so uh and and the way this whole data gets stored in the back end is also very impressive so let's say uh here it says that okay there are two entries for this webinar and when you click this it gives you uh, a broken down view like the, the first name was prateek and Pratik tried to enter two email addresses. So now just imagine that you don't have to create multiple fields. The fields actually get created on the fly. And then you can just add notes like, okay, uh, this is a hot lead, for example, and you save this. So your T, you yeah, can- have This is, notes. yeah. And this is what I mean by, this is the next level of forms, right? It's like these little details that, you know, like I didn't even know you can add a note <laughs> to each contact and I've used this thing every day, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, this is, this is all the, all the small details that I talk about uh, when I say that we are actually thinking a lot when we are creating any feature. So, so I can, you know, like for me, uh, it's just like, I can just push out features here and there left and right. It's, it's not a big deal, but I, but I really don't want to, uh, you know, kind of push out, flush out random stuff out there in the market. Because it, 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 it won't do justice, actually. So, yeah, I think that is it. Now, it's, uh, I'd it's, it's very easy to, you know, like, just ridicule someone, say, hey, it's, it's just, I didn't find anything new. It's, it's very easy. Yeah. But but oh, you yeah. come, I, come to such. I would re yeah, they haven't, I would they haven't even logged that. in. They haven't even logged in for the <laughs> first time. Then they're mentioning about that. <laughs> it's it's very easy. Uh, like to just discredit someone is is the easiest thing that you can do. Like like I, I feel so bad that 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 one post has like two fifty comments. But when when we when I did post about the tech thirty. It, it it hardly had any comment so so there are people who want to to talk a lot of bad uh but but you know like uh not the not the good stuff like there, there are many many less people who appreciate but i think mm -hmm. that's that's how it is all we have to do is you know just keep on working and people will know the word exactly yep that's what i'd focus on is you know, there, there's the internet's full of negativity. Uh, just ignore all of that. Uh, we have a good community, uh, and people who see quality and recognize it, they just recognize it. Right. Yeah, exactly. The rest, they'll just miss out, and that's their that's their loss, not ours, right? They'll just miss out. Yeah. yeah. So I think that now we know, and and we let's hope that I I want everyone to to have Babelbox and 
and minded like only the LTD users will get the Babel box uh, because very soon we might just have Babel box as a comp as as an uh, add on within make forms. Like if you want Babel box, pay, pay another 10, 15 dollars a month. But but the LTD community will just get it for free. Well, that's uh, awesome. so people are saying, when are we getting make emails? <laughs> <laughs> so, so first time is Dialog Box, then. and then yeah, first time is Dialog Box, and then you know yeah. don't don't you distract get to, like, our SaaS founders, okay? <laughs> yeah, and um, let me so now. I think everyone is trying to provoke me, and. <laughs> Bad habit of getting Pratik, big, I get me show you another product I'm working on. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. Just, just wait a second. <laughs> yes. so, are you, oh, shit. Something is... This is something that we are working on internally. Uh, this is like a small subset of developers who wanted to do this. So we said, okay, if you want to do it. So we are working on a mini CRM for MakeForms user. Oh, uh, dude, don't so... even show this. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get people so... too excited. <laughs> Open up a can of worms. Yeah, so, so here is your, your pipeline. So you can connect a pipeline to a form. You have leads inbox. You can add a lead. Let's say I would write uh, Charlie Patel. It is added as a new lead. I'll write Rocket Hub. Add Rocket Hub as a new value. Okay, then I'd select a label, anything that I want, like say hot lead value. I would like uh, 2,500 and then I can select United States dollars. Actually, I just go down here. A lead CRM ID, I can add, add fields. I can just save this lead and then I can actually convert this lead to a deal. I can select that uh, which pipeline do I want this. I, I have one right now. And then uh, I can just save this and now this, this lead will be, <clears throat> it actually be moved to, to deal pipeline. And then uh, you can actually create as many deal pipelines and within the deal pipeline, you can actually create stages and you can have uh, things like uh, uh, the, the deal probability and then, okay, I can say that again. And then if it's in this phase, then uh, it would be at 80%. Uh, over here, it would be like hardly 20%. And then this would be 100. And then you can just uh, keep on adding stages. So this is this is like a mini CRM for, for our users. You can have contacts. So let's say we, we just added one over here. And then, then you can just go into the deal. Uh, you can click the deal. And then um, you can have, literally have your entire stuff planned, like, uh, let's say we are doing it uh, in lunch uh, with the client. So you can add those details and then you will have a whole track record of what all stuff a user can do. So, and then you can have uh, CRM level stuff like uh, what are, what will be this. Then you can have activity settings like, uh, it, it, like these were the activities. Then you can set your currencies. You can create your product. So. So this is like a, a mini CRM, which, which the team is already working on. So, so when I actually talk about stuff, it's like when I say that uh, we, we don't want to just be the data collection tool, but data management tool also. So, so this is what uh, we, we, we are meaning actually. Yeah. All right. All right. So I think we took up a lot of time of uh, everybody. I see people still writing, so that's awesome. Um, there's probably only a few questions that didn't get answered, but I think a few are duplicates. Um, if I know we can block IP locations through Cloudflare, but would it be possible to, yeah, the, the IP stuff is being worked on. It's stuck with the compliance team because IP addresses again are like a little under the purview of, you know, GDPR compliance and. It, at times it can also come up as a PII data, like personally identifiable data. So we are just trying to see how can we uh, do it in the in the most compliant way. And that's the reason uh, the IP blocking feature is still under development. Yeah, and I think most uh, companies, uh, just since we're on that topic, uh, Irfan and Pratik, most companies are trying to stay away from that space because of where the regulations are going. Uh, 
You yep. don't want to be a company that is keeping records or having anything that can be perceived as personally identifiable information. Uh, so it's a risky place to play. Um, if it was me, again, this is just me, Not I'm not speaking for Patik, I would just not even bother with it. Because six months down the line, that may become the new law in America, in, in Europe, more, probably even be first, that says you can't do that. And now yep. we wasted all this development effort for no reason. So I will tell you tell you one very um <clears throat> interesting thing. So we were uh like while we were building make forms, we were doing this database uh data center scouting. Like so, what what really happens is that uh GDPR is a EU specific law, and HIPAA is the US specific law. Now, uh GDPR tells very specifically that uh, you cannot host the data of a EU citizen outside outside EU. And uh, so there is something called as E. So, so you have said that, hey, uh, let's try to find a midway wherein uh, the, the European companies or, or the EU people's data can be hosted in the US we we guarantee that we won't be looking into that data like like the us government at the nsa and all those folks they said that and then uh the, there came a new uh law called as the eu us privacy shield wherein if the data center is under the eu us privacy shield then the us government won't uh, see those data inside those data centers and the U.S. government and the EU government agreed to that. This was all done. The data center team was trying to sell us that, uh, oh, we have this covered under the EU-U.S. privacy shield. So you can actually provide HIPAA and GDPR both compliance on one data center. So we did our research. And while we were doing those research, we understood one thing that EU US privacy shield is agreed upon by both the governments, but but the EU court says that we do not accept the EU US privacy shield. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's always yeah. EU, man. <laughs> and, 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 and this is why people should not uh, leave the research, leave the semantic details, having to read 500 page documents that are written in foreign languages and all of that stuff. Leave that to the SaaS developers that have to like deal with that nonsense. Um, a lot of these regulations, as we all know, like they're more constraints than they are actually helping in any way, but some of them are necessary. So um, when it comes to these bigger decisions of, EU, GDPR, HIPAA, US law for this, uh, privacy law for this. I think the overarching statement that needs to be made is there's a reason it has to be structured a certain way. Yeah, there's a reason sense. there's a US and EU data center you have to choose. Uh, now, your other form builders don't care. Okay, That's why they're not asking you that question. So you guys may think that's weird, but it's because they don't care. OK, here they care and they know the law. So they're going to ask you, where do you want your data center? And exactly. you should be thankful for that. Right. Because it's so not that's just what you should want. For, for us, it would have been very easy to say that, hey, we are under the EU US privacy shield. Okay. And, and the governments agree to that. But within the government, the, the court does not agree to it. So there is so much of nitpicking in this. So, so for us, we could have very easily escaped that route and say, oh yeah, we, we provide every compliance everywhere. But then uh, ethically, it would have been so wrong to because because when, when someone trusts us with all these certifications, uh, we want to be truthful. Like, and I would say that being truthful, being, you know, like uh, ethical is, is the choice. You, you can just say anything and because because the no one has got so much time to actually do all this research so we could have easily said that no we have all the compliances everywhere but then then i know deep down within my heart that i'm being wrong to the people 
and that's not how we want to do the business so and and i come from from a from a business family where like like i and and charlie both and i think current you too right you are a sindhi right so so we all come from from the from the business families and yep and being a, a you know like family of businesses i think this is what we are told like be truthful and don't do the business in in an unethical way but but in the today's world where where you know like every ltd is coming up and shutting down it's it's too difficult to actually be so truthful okay yeah. cool so i think that is it some people are saying is it possible to change data sent in the future i think no we we are not going to do that and whether give whether given giveaway winners already announced i'm not sure charlie will yeah, yeah, Karan will take care of that. Uh, yeah, we'll take care of it. Okay. Some so, all the webinars and live videos that Pratik demonstrated showcasing the tool and features were very impressive. I bought the tool after seeing the first one. Awesome. Cool. So I think it feels so bad that we have to end this and this is probably going to be the last time that we are engaging with the audience. So, but yeah, I think um, we achieved what we wanted to and let's try to reach the 100K mark and yep. let's get the bevel box out of the box for everyone. And then then we'll come back with more tools like, like make emails, make mm -hmm. CRM. Or exclusive to Rocket Up. So yeah. if, you're, if you're going anywhere else, then, you know, it's not going to be anywhere else. <laughs> On rocket <laughs> so uh go ahead make it happen and uh i pasted the link to the deal page so this is the final announcement in terms of you know that if you it's your time either you can you know laugh uh, and have the best forms and be happy or be sad that you didn't get the chance <laughs> to grab it um at a lifetime deal so go ahead and grab your code before it ends yeah so so i think gabor has one question uh it says that how much data can be stored in 50 gb is it text only or gra so, so the 50 gigabytes is only applicable to the uploads that you do so it's it's got nothing to do with the uh with the normal text that you are taking it as an input so so don't worry about that yeah, Gabor, I, I, I'm familiar with what you're doing, and I, I, I know your business. You'll never reach the 50 GB, so don't worry about it. <laughs> never. So even even with make stories, I think uh, we we offer one terabyte of free uh, traffic, and and we've seen that uh, out of four thousand users, only three or four actually surpass that limit. So, so we've always been generous with the limits because. Like like I always tell this that if at all if someone ever pays me for a tool then I should not be using it as a real estate to market myself. Like today, if you see Type Form Survey Monkey, once you you finish it, they say okay, create a form like this for yourself, and then uh they would just you know kind of create their own branding. Same with Survey Monkey, so. Uh, at least I we do not want to do that with the form links. We just so so that's the reason that you don't see make forms branding uh, once the forms are published. Uh, but yeah, I think um, with the emails, yeah, we are uh, trying to be better. I'll see how we can incorporate that custom SMTP once we have a clearance from the from the CISO, uh, the compliance team. So yeah, we're we're trying hard to not market ourselves because we feel that's the way we will be growing. Okay, there's one last question, then we'll wrap it up. Um, so can we set reply to email address just like in Webflow form? Uh, that's a good ask. I think you can do that while you're setting up the, the workflows. You can set up your Reply to just let me see if we can do that. Just give me a second. Uh no, I think I'll I'll but I'll just write it down. Uh, by the way, let's I I keep on liking to you know do some 
flexing so uh, the flex uh, so so this was how the 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 workflows work so you select a response then you can have a condition so let's say if else condition if it ends with make stories dot io then send an email if it uh if this does not work then if then there's something else and you can keep on building these kind of workflows actually so just think of this as a as a uh, reimbursement wherein <clears throat> uh you know like if the reimbursement comes in then uh, it just goes through to some manager for approval and uh, or approve or test approve. They approve it. So it goes to some reviewer, then it goes to other level of approval. So so you can actually create these kind of workflows also uh, within make forms. Again, like as I told, we are not just focused on data collection, but we are focused on data management. And when I say this, this is exactly uh, what I mean by data management. All right, so uh, that's a wrap then, I think. Uh, yep. Hope to see everyone again soon. Yep. This was one of the fastest months, you know, like it just went like this. We know it, we were doing first webinar a month back. Yeah. You know, it all flew like anything. So it felt it like a journey altogether. It's like, you know. Yeah, but it, it, was, it was very quick, I would say. Yeah. Yep. Okay, the, some people are just buying make forms right now. It's like, so go ahead. Like, we have 22 people out of that, 10 people have bought. So, I think three people have already bought from the webinar itself. So, you're waiting for the other yep. seven. Go ahead, grab <laughs> your code. Box. Like, come on. Yep. Well, the boss says, Thanks for the webinar. Pratik is a really kind guy, not just expert on tool development. <laughs> <laughs> get make emails and next month will also be fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think uh what we're doing there is we are trying to build an ai so you just tell the ai what kind of an email do you want and your entire email gets ready so but we are working on some prompt engineering over there and not and, like and you know why you know why this is more important because if you if you see every other email automation builder right for example active campaign even every other automation or their own editors they're, they're just very behind very much behind yeah, on that you can you cannot you cannot even add images in between the text you have to kind of break in between like, like how can you then live with that that's what i'm thinking about <laughs> so yeah, i think that's that's true and uh with make emails it's our business model is very clear <clears throat> all you have to do is create the emailer and we just export it as html and css and and you can just just take it away so it's it's very yeah. we don't want to get into the sending business because it's it's kind of very difficult business and then every other sending tools actually allow you to import html and css Okay. Cool. So good night. Good evening. All right, guys. Thank you so much for taking. Oh, I appreciate right. it. Uh, yeah, thank you, community members, thank for joining. You. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. Take okay, care. Bye. 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 Bye.